Good morning or uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dorvi. I'm the SVP of product at Tango. I assume we I met uh, most of you already in previous webinars. And with me, um, Nate is here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nate. I'm a product manager here at Tango. I'm looking forward to introducing the concept of digital customer success to everyone today. Thanks, Nate. So as Nate just stated, we are here today to discuss uh, what does it mean digital customer success and why do we need to focus on it, especially right now? Uh, what do we see out there in regard to digital customer success and seeing a little bit the answers that were just uh, provided in the chat. I think there's a lot of content that you will be able to learn from today. Then we want to drill down a little bit to see how can you get started with digital customer success, leveraging all the great capabilities that we can offer uh, into Tango. And Nate will show you live how you can do that in the product and then what the future uh, will bring a little bit further into Tango for additional capabilities around digital customer success. So before we'll start, I do wanna have a quick question to the audience to understand a little bit better. What is the situation out there today? So try to rate, please, how mature is your digital uh, customer success program at this? It seems like many of the people that are attending this webinar have somehow started to implement and to talk about digital touchpoint and digital customer success. Many of them are still thinking about the concept and many haven't started. So we believe uh, in Tutango that this is the time for digital customer success. And we definitely need to uh, move forward with that. So let's drill down a little bit, uh, Nate, to uh, understand what does it mean digital customer success in Tutango. Digital customer success is an approach to leverage digital processes and digital assets in order to make sure that customers can reach their designated outcomes. You have a lot of digital assets that you can leverage, a lot of data on customers, and those two should serve in order to be able uh, to drive customer success. In addition, that will give you the, the way to adapt quickly to the customer needs. So leveraging data and understanding what's happening with the customers out there where are they in their engagement with you will enable you to drive additional activities, change and adapt whenever needed, and make sure that you have a digital customer engagement throughout the journey. But why now? Why digital customer success is actually something that we see now more than ever. Putting aside the fact that we are now living in a digital world um, and everything needs to be digital, the competition is out there and the competition is trying to reach out to your customers at any point in any place and they are there. If you want to stay competitive, you have to leverage digital customer success. You see, and I'm sure each one of you are practicing that whenever you are spending time out there on the website, on other website, on the browser, you get all the time ads and uh, competition that trying to attract you for attract you for other products. This is there. It's not a question at this point. This is something that we all practice daily, and we have to make sure that we are um, we are addressing as well. Let's talk a little bit on customer success. In general, customer success is not linear, and I think we at Tango sharing this knowledge and fact for a long time with each one of you. Customer success is not a, a waterfall or it's not a process that comes one step after the other. Customer communication is something that you need to listen to and react when customers are in a certain step. When customer may be shifting their demands, you have to change it. And you have to make sure that at every point in time, you can answer customer questions. Customers has many questions. You have this data, leverage it at any point in time. Make sure that you are addressing customer requirements when they come in, not necessarily in a linear way, because we already said customer success is not linear and we should not leverage it or think about it in that, that manner. And lastly, we wanna make sure that you are interacting with your customers and automation or digital doesn't mean that it's not personal. I'm sure that each one of you feeling that he's getting a very personal experience when he's working with many brands that are out there. 
digital doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice quality. This digital doesn't mean that it's only for one set of customer versus the other because you have, you know, um, um, valuable customers out there that needs to get a personal uh, interaction. No, digital can feel personal. Digital should feel personal. It's, it's not about, it's not personal. You have a way to do it right. You have a way to make sure your customers will get a personal feeling with whatever you're interacting with them. And with that, I wanna uh, let Nate show you how to tango enable you to be personal, to leverage all the digital assets that are there, all the data points that you have on your customers, but still make sure that you are giving your customers the personal feeling that they are being engaged at any point in the journey. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and dive into a product demo um, and we will show uh, how to put these things Ravit just mentioned into practice uh, by leveraging our suite of digital success blocks that are available in our success block marketplace. For those of you who are not familiar, um, Tatango uh, has a, um, a revolutionary concept for, with what we call success blocks. And success blocks are all-in-one toolkits that enable you to manage any customer journey or initiative um, and get up and running with it very quickly without the need for large deployment projects. Because of, because of their modular nature, uh, you're able to get started with your most critical business priority first and then grow into broader initiatives. Now, we actually have a marketplace, as I mentioned, where all of these success blocks are available to you uh, today for free. Um, the marketplace enables you to find your intent and get started within a couple of seconds. And we have success blocks for all types of engagement models, not just digital. But today, as you know, we're focusing specifically on our suite of digital success blocks to enable a uh, digital customer success program. So we have today already a digital success block for every stage of the customer journey from customer acquisition through onboarding, adoption, nurture, and renewal. By leveraging these, you'll be able to get started very quickly with digital customer success and follow uh, some proven best practices that we built into these products. Without further ado, let's go ahead and actually jump into Tatango itself. Let's first look at how we actually get these success blocks. So we, the success block marketplace is located in uh, your left-hand sidebar here. And you'll see that when I click here, I've got a very long uh, page full of you know multiple success blocks for all sorts of different things from detecting risk to maximizing upsell and even managing project-based onboardings. Again, we're here to talk about digital and we made it easy for you to find those blocks. You just simply need to click the digital touch here and we'll filter all of the noise out of the way. Now, I've taken the liberty of adding these to uh, an environment for this webinar today. All you need to do where you see open here, you should see add if you don't have these blocks already. You can simply click that and the block will be installed within your environment within a couple of seconds. If you'd like to learn more about any of these blocks, you can drill into the details get a couple of screenshots of what you can expect to see once you install the block read a, and read a basic overview. But we're not here to look at about pages. We're here to look at these success blocks. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, again, I mentioned we have a success block to cover every stage of the customer journey from, uh, from acquisition all the way through renewal. So let's actually start by looking at our convert freemium success block, which is designed for businesses that have a digital acquisition model. All of these success blocks, you'll notice a common theme in that all of them are built around a series of campaigns. Campaigns in Tatango are your method for communicating digitally with your customers and prospects. So we wanted to give you some out of the box, well-designed uh, brand agnostic templates that are pre-configured for you to be able to just quickly um, make maybe a couple edits on the copy and then hit send. We're all about, as Ravit mentioned, these success blocks are all about leveraging digital uh, data inputs and responding to them without the need necessarily for a person. So with the convert freemiums block, for example, the customer's experience would be that when they first sign up, they'll receive a welcome email, and then we'll wanna drive them through to complete uh, key setup steps 
that will enable them to realize value from the product quickly and drive them towards making a purchase. And how that looks, if I drill into our ad data here, you can see that this, this, um, this campaign is designed to drive a user to start using um, a key feature that's going to help them to realize value from the product. Now, your particular product, you may not be asking customers necessarily to add data. This is simply an example. However, what I want to point out here is the way in which this is actually triggered. So here we're looking, first of all, at whether or not this user has actually already done the thing that we're trying to get them to do. If they haven't done it already and they're within their first few days of sign up, they're going to receive this email prompting them to go and add data to their environment. If they have already added data, there's no need to bother them with extra junk in their inbox. We'll skip, simply skip over them. Now you'll see those inputs are similar across multiple campaigns. If we look at just at one more quickly, you'll see the same thing here. If the user um, has not already added an integration, we'll simply prompt them to go and do that. And one of the most powerful things about Tatango's uh, digital engagement tools um, and campaign specifically is the ability to, to actually measure goal achievement. So every, um, every email engine out there can tell you who opened and who clicked on your email. Only Tatango can tell you who did those things, but also who actually went into the product and did the thing that we were trying to get them to do. So here we're gauging success of this campaign, not just on did people receive it, did they read it, did they click on it, but did they actually integrate data? Which is very, very powerful. Now, all of these emails are being sent automatically. There's no person involved once they're up and running. And uh, we then start to leverage the scorecard in these success blocks to understand our performance around the uh, specific customer engagement that we're managing. In this case, again, is converting freemium accounts. The scorecards are broken up into multiple goals with individual KPIs underneath them to help you understand performance. So with a freemium program, we care a lot about driving signup volumes and understanding trends in signup volumes over time. We also care, obviously, a lot about converting customers. So uh, what are which of these customers or these prospects rather are highly likely to convert? How many of them are qualified leads? How many of them are close to hitting, you know, potentially um, uh, thresholds that are set within the free product? So maxing out their license utilization um, and, uh, you know, uh, maxing out all of their assigned users, things of that nature we're monitoring in this block, again, out of the box. We're also monitoring how these free users are consuming and using the product. And again, understanding trends and performance over time. We obviously want to retain our free users. So we have some retention metrics out of the box for you to understand, you know, how many highly active users do we have? How many of these free accounts have churned out due to inactivity? And how many have been active over the last week? And then finally, regardless of whether or not someone's paying us or not, if they interact with our brand, it's very important that we deliver a great customer experience. So here for our free customers, we're looking at their uh, free account health. We're understanding the health of accounts that recently converted. And of course, continuing to monitor NPS, even if the, the accounts aren't, aren't paying just yet. Now, not every company out there has a, um, a, uh, a free product or a digital acquisition model. Um, and you may be starting instead with customer onboarding. And here we have the digital onboarding block, which again, starts and is focused all around campaigns. Now, one thing you might notice off the bat is there's actually some similar emails in, or similar campaigns rather, in the digital onboarding block as there are in the convert freemiums block. And again, that has to do with the fact that we're trying to get customers to value quickly by driving them through a series of predictable steps and enabling them along the way. So whether you are trying to get them to realize value before they make a purchase or realize value quickly after they make a purchase, that part of the process is going to be generally the same. So we've got similar templates around welcoming uh, new users and driving them through those setup steps 
but then following on with that, with closing out onboarding with a congratulatory email and sending a, a satisfaction survey to understand the user's experience during, during onboarding. Now where these blocks really start to differ, again, is freemium is all about acquisition and conversion. Uh, digital onboarding is really focused on reducing uh, first time to value. So first, we're looking at what's our volume of new people coming in? How many do we need to onboard? And how does that trend over time? Secondarily, we're measuring our performance, or rather our customer's ability to actually completely set up their account and get onboarded within a certain amount of time. Out of the box, this is configured to monitor over 30 days. Your onboarding may be longer, maybe shorter. And it's just a couple of clicks to make those minor tweaks in these success blocks. We're also obviously wanting to drive usage during onboarding and create an exceptional onboarding experience for our customers. So we're measuring that the usage over time, how many of these accounts are highly active, how many users are active over a given time period, and what is the overall onboarding satisfaction rate and average responses that are coming in. Now, once customers are onboarded, we need to drive them to adopt the product further. And for that, we have the drive product adoption success block. Again, going to start with campaigns here, where we've got a handful of campaigns that you typically want to send during adoption stage of the customer journey. You'll be doing things like inviting users to digital events like this one so that you can introduce features to them, uh, share the value, and ultimately drive them to adopt those features. You can announce new features and even win back stagnant users. Again, these are intelligent. So we're looking at our paying customers where the user's last activity date was over 30 days ago. We wanna get them to come back into the product and continue to use it. Taking a closer look at the scorecard, you'll see again, a different series of metrics all focused around product adoption. So increasing platform usage and consumption, whether that's utilization or consumption of licenses, both are supported by this block increasing adoption of a handful of core features that we know really drive value, and then increasing user retention. So how many users are returning back on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis? Now on adoption, even though we're going through this in a way that seems linear, is not, um, not necessarily a linear thing. Um, so jumping ahead to nurturing customers, we may still be sending them adoption emails during this time period, but nurturing customers is a bit different than driving adoption. We'll start with campaigns again to understand what are some nurture activities that this success block can do for you right out of the box. Things like celebrating company anniversaries, sending monthly blog roundups, inviting people to recurring monthly training sessions, and of course, your annual season's greetings are all things that come out of the box ready, ready to go for you. Again, I'll just point out that these Templates are intended to be brand agnostic. So if you don't have a designer that's ready to go with hero images for you, these are free to use. Now we may be doing similar activities during the adoption and the nurture stages of the customer journey, but we're measuring again, very different things and have very different goals. Nurturing customers is all about improving customer relationships uh, and increasing customer engagement with the ultimate goal of maintaining a high renewal rate. So here, around customer engagement, we're actually monitoring the success of each of the various campaigns, or rather monitoring the success of our campaign strategy during the nurture stage of the customer journey. So we're looking at open rates, click-through rates, and goal achievement, which I mentioned earlier when we were looking at the Convert Freemium success block. We also wanna improve customer relationships. So here we're looking at NPS and customer satisfaction, as well as customer health and understanding are we having an increase in, uh, in customers that are in poor health? And in this particular demo environment, it looks like, unfortunately, we have a slight problem with that. And then finally, these activities are really focused around maintaining a high renewal rate. So we brought in renewal performance into this success block so that you can see in one place, is my customer nurture strategy supporting our renewal goals? And then lastly, on renewals, to close out the customer journey, we have a, a, our most recently released digital success block is the automate renewals block. This block is very powerful um, in that it 
it can manage the entire renewal process for you. So first of all, when customers are coming up on a renewal, you need to let them know. Well, this box configured right out of the box to, up, uh, to, up, to notify rather your customers when that renewal is coming up. And if they make a payment, we'll send them a payment confirmation. If they happen to miss that payment, we'll send them a payment reminder. In the event that a customer churns out, we'll try to win them back with a lost customer win back. And then um, to course correct in the event of something like, for example, an expired payment method, we'll be able to detect that and alert the customer of that expired payment before the renewal comes up. Then finally, within the scorecard, we're looking at what's our renewal performance, which is ultimately the goal of this block is to ensure high renewal rates. And then of course, monitor renewal risks so that in the event that there is some amount of human intervention needed, it's very easy to spot. So here we can see who's up for renewal, how much is up for renewal right now, but also what's our performance during the current period. Out of the box, this, this block is configured to support a monthly recurring revenue um, subscription model. However, it's very, very simple, again, with just one or two clicks to change that to be quarterly, annually, or whatever your renewal cycle is. Uh, we've got a handful of renewal risks down here at the bottom as well, showing you how many of those customers have an expired payment method, who missed their payment, how much is their payment missed for, and then which accounts are in poor health that are in the renewal uh, stage of the customer journey. So that's a quick overview of all five of the digital success blocks that we have already available for you in the marketplace. And then quickly, I just want to announce one upcoming success block that we have that again, fits into this, fits into it's our digital customer success bundle, which is the automate upsells block. So similar to automate renewals, we wanna be able to automatically identify opportunities and trigger campaigns to convert. This block will enable you to measure and analyze attributed revenue to understand your campaign, campaign success. So did my upsell campaign actually result in a conversion, which is probably the most important question that you can ask when it comes to your, up, your ups, digital upsell strategy. This will also give you the ability to set upsell goals and track progress towards achievement. I really hope everyone learned how to drive digital customer success with Tatango uh, effectively. Why now? And how to leverage all the great assets in the marketplace. As Nate mentioned, if there are any other questions, please send them and we'll address them later on. Thank you everyone and have a great day.